Wow, as we're winding up this third, second Peter, we've got to say in chapter 3, uh, the, the verses here, uh, final verses, they're finalizing what Peter said. And this is the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. As he remembers them, <clears throat> he remembers they had a pure mind. And he said, I'm remembering your pure mind. I want to stir it up again for you. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of, uh, of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. He said, remember now, go back in your mind, remember the beginning. Remember where we started. Remember those Old Testament saints that we talked about that we learned about, and how they obeyed God, and how we are to do as they did. Uh, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. In other words, he's saying, be careful. Look at yourself. Make sure that you're not one of those scoffers walking in your own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that, that by the word of God that the heavens were of old and that the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth where, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, in the book of Revelations, it tells us that in the end, he's, God's going to take this earth and cast it into the lake of fire forever and ever. And a new heaven and a new earth is going to come out. And, and he is going to put that's going to be a glorious day for those of us who are saved. But beloved, be not ignorant of these things that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning His promises as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why hasn't the earth ended already? Because God's long-suffering. He's giving many, many thousands, millions of peoples another chance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the watch, that the heavens, in which that the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. <clears throat> Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you, ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for the hast <clears throat> hastening under the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such a thing, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blemish. And according that the long suffering of the, our Lord and salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, which written unto you, as also in all his uh, epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are 
the some things hard to be understood, which they that unlearned and unstable uh, rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. They put they put the scribes and Pharisees put down what Paul said. <clears throat> ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now forever and ever. Now he's not saying falling out of the grace of God. He's saying falling out of the steadfastness that you're in. In other words, are you steadfast daily in the gospel? Are you in the book daily? Are you steadfast in the book? This is a question, he said. Second Peter three, seventeen. That's it. I just read it. Wells without water. Uh, meat uh, that's not deep enough, uh, not good enough to keep you alive. Do you have evidence in your life on a daily basis? Verse eight. Uh, uh, one day, Revelations twenty and two. One day, let's look over there, Revelation, by the, by the chance, and, and just see what he says in, in chapter 20, and verse 2, chapter 19, chapter 20, and verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Wow. Wow. Do you believe all of the word? Man. Five times he talked about the order of the world. He talked about the present fire there is going to be. He talked about the passing uh, wind. He talked about the, the preservation and the preserving of the Christian. So are you preserved until the day of redemption or not? If you are, get in the word, my friends. Get in the word. Now this last one was short but sweet. Get in the word. We'll see you next time, right? Bye-bye.